Okay, so Besiata Deshmai with the help of a Baruch Hu. Let's continue our Limud of Lakute Maran Tarabes. We began last week by way of introduction just to open up what we called a Sugya, the Mesechta of Tarabes, just a little bit to understand the concept of the Amuda de Mtsuisa of that middle line that extends from that place of Keser, from that place of Atik, of Arik Anpin, all the way down to Malchus, and the interplay between David and Malka Meshicha of Mashiach, whose whole task is to take this sphere of Malchus and to turn it into a place of Malchus de Gedusha, how he draws his energy from the highest place, Saif Ma says, ultimately drawing from Machshava Tchila, Sofa Nautz Betchilasa. So let's just read inside what we did last week in Eretz Hashem tonight. We'll delve into a very, very fascinating sugya in Eretz Tzaddik and the way in which we're able to actually see throughout our history how Mashiach is related to tefillah, right? We talked last time about the way that Mashiach is conquering the world with the weapon of tefillah, right? That's his kleizainai, kleizainai. And we talked about how all of the melchamas, Rabbi Nachman wrote, and we'll see it inside, everything, everything, everything is tefillah. So tonight we'll focus on three redeemers, or two redeemers and one would-be redeemer. We're going to talk about it Hashem, how they were related to tefillah and how tefillah either was used or should have been used by them to redeem the whole world. And so let's see what Ibn Nachman says. Let's begin again. Lashon Rabbeinu Zuchana Deracha Vayoyimra Hashem Amoyshe Emar like Hanan from the beginning Vene Aaron Viyamarta Leim Lenefesh Le Yitam Ba'amo Says the Heligar Rebbe Zuchus Yagun Leinu Kol Yisrael Issa B'Sifra Ditz Ni'usa it's brought in the Zohar Kaddish the following statement, Minukva de Pardaska, from the Nekev, from the hole, from the hole of Pardaska, which is the nose, which means the nostril, the left nostril. Mashach Rucha de Chayil Mashiach. Mashiach is drawing his life force, his energy from that place. And Rabbi Nachman begins to explain. Ki Iker Kleizeinoi Shal Mashiach, the main primary weapon of Mashiach. Interestingly enough, the word Mashiach is itself the letters Mashiach, which means to speak, which is related to Tefillah. The very word Mashiach, Redeemer, is connected to Tefillah in that it is Mashiach. So the, play, the, the primary weapon of Mashiach, who had Tefillah, is Mashiach, is Tefillah. Shehu bechinas chayta. Now tefillah is connected to this place of Arik Anpin, the place of the nose. Kamay shekasu, because the pasuk says in Yeshaya, usi hilasi. This is again the grammar is going to be very important for us later on to focus on this pasuk. But for now, just a simple explanation. Usi hilasi says a kaddish baruch hu. My praise, which again is hinting to tefillah, echtam lach. Says a kaddish baruch hu. Through the schus of you praising me, at least on a pasuk shat, that's what it means. Usi hilasi, and my praise as it comes out of the mouths of the Jewish nation. Amzu Yitzar Taliti Hilasi Yisaperu, right? That we were created to give Hoda'a Yehudim Vechule, Hapam Oides Hashem. Echtam Lach says Hashem, and that's Chus, I will hold back my anger. That means that Tehila is connected to the word Echtam, which is related to the word Chotem, nose. And that's exactly what's happening in that place of Keser, and that place of Arik Ampin, of that nose of Pardaska, is complete Rachamim Gemurim. That place of Echtam Lach, where all anger is held back, where it's complete, complete mercy. Umisham Iker Chiyusai, and that is where Mashiach ben David is drawing his chiyas from, his life force from. And because he has this weapon of prayer, so any war that he'll fight, and any way that he'll conquer the world again in a holy way, Rabbi Nachman said, like we talked about last time, that Mashiach is coming to take over the world without one bullet being fired. So it doesn't mean he's conquering by force, but Adarama, to conquer them with the beauty of his words and the beauty of his life energy and, and, and the beauty of his worldview, Hakol Misham. Everything that Mashiach is drawing from is Misham from that place of Pardaska, from that place of Tehilasi, Echtam, that place of the nose, of Kesar, of Arak Ampen, of Tefillah. Kamay Shekasov. And how do we know that Mashiach is bound to this? Because the Pasuk describing Mashiach says, Vaharichai B'yiris Hashem, which literally means he will be imbued with the Yiris Hashem, but Harichai, which means to be imbued, is related to Reach, which is the function of the nose, as we'll discuss in Mitzvah Hashem later. Sebuchinas Chaitem, this itself is linked to the nose, Vizet Iker Kleizenoi, this is his weapon. How do we know that it's a weapon? Kemoy Shekasov, Becharbi, Uvikashti. 
that Yaakov Avinu refers to tefillah as bechar biyavikashti, my, my sword and my bow and arrow, Rashi and Unklis, translate and render this into tefillah ubakasha, tzloisi uvuusi, tefillah ubakasha, prayer and supplication. Ukamai Shekasa, Rebbe Nachman brings another Pasuk. Ki loy vikashti eftach. David HaMelech says, I did not rely on keshes and, 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 and my own weapon, but rather be'elikim hilalnu. What was my substitute for that? Was be'elikim hilalnu. I praised God. Right? A very strong question is why Ibn Nachman over here feels that he needs two proof texts. Right? He could have already proved it with the first Pasuk that said, Bechar vikashti. That already links tefillah to weaponry. Why did Ibn Nachman need a second Pasuk? Amir Tashem. We'll get into that either this year or the next year, but it's important. Bechinas, Usihi lasi echtam lach. This Bechina is also very important, right? Why did Ibn Nachman need to go back to Usihi lasi echtam lach? He already taught me that tefillah is related to the nose. What's going on over here with this extra proof text for this, that prayer is related to the concept of a weapon? And then what's this Bechinas, Usihi lasi echtam lach, right? Why do I have to link that back to Usihi lasi echtam lach? I already told you that Tehillah is related to Chaitim. Mir Tashem, more on that to come. And we said that this weapon, the way that Mashiach ben David, if you look at the diagram that we had, which is related to the sphere of Malchus, right? That, that, lower, that lowermost point in the system of the sphere is particularly in the Amud Adam to Isa. That relates to David Amalek, that relates to Mashiach ben David, that relates to Tefillah. He needs to be mekabal that from the aspect of Yosef HaTzadik, Hainu Shmiras Habris, which means Shmir Sabris, guarding the covenant, sexual purity, moral purity. How do we know that Mashiach ben David is receiving this force, this weapon of tefillah from that place of Yosef at Because the Pasuk says about Mashiach, Chagar Char Bacha Al Yarech. That he must gird his sword, what's the sword? Tefillah, al yarech, by the place of his thigh. That's telling us that where does Mashiach get the sword from? From the place of the thigh, which is related to Shmir Sabris. And another Pasuk says, The master of the world promises that from your offspring will come Kiselach will come a seat, a chair, which is Malchus based David, Zebachinas Mashiach, Bachinas Tefillah, because we already said that Mashiach is an aspect of Tefillah. What's the condition? Say the next four words on the Pasuk, if they're going to guard the covenant, if they're going to have that purity in that place of Yesod, in that place of Yosef HaTzadik, so that Mamela are going to be able to build on that and to have this holy tefillah called the Nukva de Pradaska tefillah, related to Kesa, Rachman, Gemurim, Hainu Bechinas Yosef, this aspect of Yosef HaTzadik. So we described it already last time. The way in which not only is this true of the global Redeemer, right, of the Redeemer, Mashiach ben David is going to take over the whole world, but much more importantly, perhaps, is our own inner redemption, is our own exile, which means that we're stuck in a place of viewing Malchus as being devoid of godliness, where we're not able to see a Kaddish Baruch Hu in every circumstance. We're not able to recognize his presence bursting from behind every little leaf and every blade of grass. And, and, and the world seems to be devoid of godliness, which is a Malchus de Sitra But we have within ourselves that Mashiach, that Redeemer, that Chelek HaMashiach within, that's able to bring us to a world of Malchus to Gedusha, to be able to see a world as, as bursting with meaning and, and, and to see all of history as being his story, right? His story is history. It's like Kaddish Baruch Hu's story. It's just a gigantic story. Kaddish Baruch Hu's telling us his story of this master plan and everything, everything is permeated with godliness. That's Malchus to Gedusha, the Mashiach. Now, how do we get there? Mashiach brings that to us first, by being the Kabul from Shmir Sabris, that's the first stage. We talked about last time how Shmir Sabris is connected to Anivos, which is going to be a very, very big topic in Ritzel we're going to get to, the Hemshech, because the Hebech of Shmir Sabris is the biggest, biggest form of Gaiva. It breaks the boundary of the name Shakai, right? Because Shakai is connected to Shmir Sabris, Anikel Shakai, the Pasuk says, Prey Urave, Peri Verivia, which is connected to that fa- faculty and function, is connected to the name Shakai. What does the name Shakai mean? Misha Amar Le Olamo died. That the Master of the World says, Trust me, that our boundaries in place, trust me, that I give you what you need in this area and in all areas of life. To seek to take more, to seek to breach that boundary is Mamish, the biggest, biggest form of gaiva to say master of the world I don't trust your limits I don't trust that I'll be able to survive with what you gave me I need more I need to take more forcefully right I need to seek pleasure in a place that's outside of the realm of godliness says either me or you right we can't both live together you're gonna either trust me and trust that that every space of your life is filled with godliness and that you need you don't have a lack that's 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 uh, that's missing something to seek or you'll be alone 
right? He'll be alone. And so it has to be founded first on this Nikud of Shmir Sabris, which already is redemptive in a sense that you're already living your life with realizing that I need to make sacrifices. It's not easy. Nobody likes to talk about Shmir Sabris because it's hard. It's not easy. It's not, it's not one of these things like, you know, the, the, the beauty of Hanukkah and the beauty of eating donuts and, and, and latkes. It's, it's, it's a hard thing. It's very, very difficult. And that's mom's the battle of our generation, but that's the Nikudah here. That no pain, no gain. Meaning, if a person's going to live with this Malchus you know, perspective of a tzaddik, that's what a tzaddik is, a tzaddik is mandanat abrisai, so then it has to be founded on the sacrifice to say that even when it's hard, even when, it's, even, even, when, even when I'm alone, and even when, right, lo'ilam, uh, um, yeah, Adam Yerushalayim, Baseser Vagali. It's not just Vagali to be a Yerushalayim, but Baseser. When you're alone, I have to make those sacrifices, and that pays dividends, unbelievable in a, in a crazy way, right? Because Lafunsara is the Agra, and and in that way, I'm already trying to tap into this life perspective of Mashiach, and then all of a sudden, the Tfila that I'm able to dive in then, founded upon that Amuna that's penetrating the deepest, deepest levels of who I am. So all of a sudden, the Tfila is a different Tfila, having received from Shmir Sabris. From Yosef at Tzaddik, so David HaMelech, Malchus Beis David, Mashiach ben David, is able to take it mamish to the finish line and to show how my whole entire world is bursting with faith, is bursting with the ability to speak to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to have an open relationship with Him, without any walls, without any walls, I'm able to have that relationship with Hashem, mamish, face to face, panim al panim. So Yosef at Tzaddik is the basis, and that's why if you look in the diagram, it's bolded, right? The box is bolded because in every Torah, there's going to be a big chain, and we have to follow it, but you always have to get back to what's the Yisod. And over here, it's Kipshuta, the Yisod, right? What is the foundation of this lesson? Where do we begin? How do we enter into this Sugya? And the first thing is Shmir Sabris. And whatever that means in our lives, on whatever level where we're holding, whatever that means, but Shmir Sabris is to work on this Nikuda, to work on this Nikuda that ultimately begins, where does Shmir Sabris begin? In Anivas. In God consciousness, in mamish faith, that's that's where it begins. Shmir Sabris is the expression of that faith. Once I have that foundation, that Yisod, Memela, Malchus based David Tfila. The Yosef, Shashamar Sabris. So Yosef at Sadik that Shomer the Bris in this way, that he has this Yisod, that he has this foundation of Misha Omar La Dai, that he's able to trust the boundaries that Akadosh Baruch Hu set in his life. So Yosef at Tzadik, not Allah Sabachiru, we find that in this merit, Yosef at Tzadik is receiving the Bachar from Yaakov Avinu, the firstborn, which always is a double portion. Shabachinas Avoidas at Tfila, Rabbi Nachman says that Bachar is related to Tfila. It's related to the, the Avoda of Tfila. What does the firstborn, the double portion that the firstborn gets, Api Alacha, how does that relate to Tfila? Says the Hilgur Rebbe Bchinas Pishnaim because what is it called in the Torah Kedusha? It's called Pishnaim, which literally means a double portion. But Rebbe Nachman says Tefillah is also in a sense Pishnaim. Doesn't mean a double portion. There are three Tefillahs Dafka. But what's Pishnaim? P could mean a portion Pishnaim, right? He gets that double. That, that, that's what it literally means. That double portion. But P literally means a mouth. What is a mouth for if not for Tefillah? Levi Yitzchak for that in the Parshas Boy says the the mouth of a Jew was, was was created for two things. One to be Malam Tzchus on other Jews. And the second is to Davin. That's what the, that's what the mouth was created for. So P is Tfila. Shnayim is the two aspects of Tfila. P Shnayim. What's the two aspects of Tfila? Ki Tfilu P Shnayim. Because Tfila has two aspects. Shnayim. Sheyesh Baim Shivchay Shal Makim. The first thing is, is that Tfila has the aspect of praise. Shivchay Shal Makim. We're going to get into this mamish ba'omek later on, but just to get it on a basic understanding now, u'she'elas tzrachav, and then asking for our needs. Okay? Tefillah has these two aspects. The Gemara learns it out from Moshe Rabbeinu's little tefillah where he says, kel na, refan na la, right? That we need to begin with praise, ritzo, right? Ritzo, and then we get to she'elah, and then we get to asking for our needs. That's why Shemana Esri follows that pattern. We begin with hakel agada, la gibra, and then we praise Hashem, at the Kaddish, Hashem, Kaddish, and then we ask for the chayin of Adam Das. We ask for Deo, we ask for Bina, we ask for Haskel, we ask for Rafa'inu, Barich Aleinu, Vechulein. But this is tefillah. Tefillah has these two aspects. Sheyeshpem shivcha shal makin u'she'el asrachav. Therefore, pishnayim, which literally, in its simplest sense, is talking about the bechar, the double portion of the bechar, can also be seen as referring to tefillah. Now, who got tefillah? Who got the bechar, rather? Which is really tefillah. It's Yosef at Tzadik. Who's Yosef at Tzadik? Yosef is the, the shaymer abris. The tzadik yisoyed oilam. Tzaddik that's related to the, to the Bechin of Yisait, which relates on the body, as we discussed many times in the past, to that faculty of procreation, to the bris. 
Not only says Rabbi Nachman, do we have one raya that tefillah is connected to this double portion, because we said that pi shnayim can be seen other remez as pi meaning the mouth and then shnayim the two aspects. Vuhubachina says Ibn Achman, it's an actual pasuk that we say every single day. Cherev pifias biyadam. Cherev pifias biyadam. Cherev, we already said Bacharvi Bakashi is talking about tfila. Pifias means a double edge, a double edge sword, literally, but pi pias, it has two mouths. What's the mouth? We already said it's tefillah. Cherev pifiyah, he says, Rabbi Nachman, is pishnayim, that tefillah has two aspects. Amazing thing. Bechina shte pifiyah, right? Two mouths, two modes and expressions of tefillah of prayer. Bechina is pishnayim. Now, who did, who did Yosef at Tzadik take the Bechar from? Yosef was not the firstborn. Who was the firstborn of all the children? It's Reuven. Reuven lost the Bechar, and Yosef at Tzadik got it. What did Reuven do to lose the Bechar? Who knows? You know, what was Reuven's pagam? Switching, switching the bets, right? But Chazal tells us that he switched the bets. It's not what the Pasuk says. The Pasuk says that he did something a little bit more drastic than switching the bets. Chazal say, and they're Mepharashit, and the Rishonim, and Achreinim, and everybody talks about what exactly he did, and what, what was the issue. But I'll call upon him, even if it was just switching the bed, it related to the Indian of Bris. It related to the Indian of his father's, right? His, his, his father's relations with his, with his wives, right? And so on whatever level this pagam was, it was considered a pagam abris. That he, he swapped the beds of his father. This was considered a pagam in Shemir Sabris. Ah, says Rabbi Nachman, Reuven doesn't have any more on his level, what that means. On his level, the connection to Yosef at Tzadik, to the, to the bris. So Mamela, he loses Pishnayim of Tefillah because Pishnayim of Tefillah, of Malchus Igdusha, Melech HaMashiach, can only be given to someone who's connected positively to that aspect of Shemir Sabris. Rubin loses it because of Pagama Bris, and who gets it? Yosef at Tzadik, that Yosef is the pinnacle of Bris. Yosef is the pinnacle of Bris. So Rabbi Nachman explains what, what was going on with that process, why Rubin lost it, why it was given to Yosef, and what it is. What is it? Pishnaim is Tfila, Cherv Pefias Biyadam. You don't have, I don't think, on your paper of packet one, the note that I have on the side, and so I'll just read it to you. For some reason on Safari, the notes got lost. I don't know why. But I'm just going to read it to you, so follow. So, so just try to listen for a moment. Okay, and then we'll get into the sources. Yeah, Rabbi Nachman says, oh, you have an ex... Oh, oh, what am I saying? You all have the, the, the safer. Okay. Oh, the note on the side in the... Yeah, yeah, there's a note. There's a haga. Mm-hmm. This is what the note says, okay? Ba'al kein yoisev b'shvil shazach l'bechinas tefillah Rabbi Nachman says, as an aside, that Yosef HaTzadik, who was Zaycha to the aspect of Tfilah Shebechinas Tehilasi Echtam, which, like we already explained, is connected to the nose, to the Chaitim, which Tehilasi Echtam is related to the concept of Pardaska, of the nose. Bechinas Chiyas Hanimshach Minukva de Pardaska, that energy that's flowing down from what we called Arik Anpin, what the Mekubalim called Keser, that place of Racham and Gemurim, Saif Maseb and Machshavat Chila, how Malchus is Mitukan Dafka, founded upon its relationship to Keser, to Arik Anpin. Alkei Nikra. Ben Poyras Yosef. That's why the Pasuk describes Yosef as being called Ben Poyras. Ben Poyras. A beautiful, a beautiful son. Shehim Bechinas, Tafresh Pei Vav Oiris. That are called the Tarpo Oiris. The word Poyras is Gematria Tafresh Pei Vav. That's the letters. What's Tafresh Pei Vav? Where do we get this number from? 686. Where do you get the number from? Shehim Shiva Shemos. It's the Gematria of seven names, which are Av, Sag, Ma, and Ban, and then Kasa, Kana, Kamag. Don't have the time to get into the depth of this now, exactly what each of these shemas is relating to, but just on a very, very basic level by way of introduction, is that the two primary names of a Kaddish Baruch that we refer to him as, is Shem Yudke Vavke, and the Shem Elohim. Shem Yudke Vavke Elohim. On a simple level, Yudke Vavke is Gematria 26. And Elohim, Right? Is Gamatra 86 or 87? What's Gamatra? Like Kim is 80. You do the, you do the math. Huh? Pavov. Pavov. Right? It's 86. 86. Well, the Carla is 87, so I'm right both ways. Um, that's on a simple Gamatra. This is a simple level, the, numer- the numeric equivalence. But the Mukubalim teach that there's a way of getting other Gamatrias from these names by opening them up and what the, what's called a Miloy, by opening them up, by saying that the letter Yud can be just the letter Yud, in which case it's 10, but it could also be Yud Vav Dalit. 
Because that's the way that you pronounce the letter Yud is Yud Vav Dalit. All of a sudden, it has a whole different gematria. Yud Vav Dalit. And then the letter He could be He Yud. It could be He Aleph. It could be He He. And then Vav can be Vav Yud Vav, Vav Aleph, V'chule V'chule. So basically, there are three ways by utilizing the differences of opening up the names like I just demonstrated. Right? That the, that the word He, for example, could be He Yud. But it could also be He He. And it could also be He Aleph. So there are four ways in which we're able to take the shame Yudke Vavke, spell it out by switching up, right, those, those extra letters, by pronouncing them in different ways with different letters, and we get four gematrias from them. One is Av, which is 72, it's gematria chesed. One is Sag, which is 63. Mem, He, Ma is 45, and then Ban is 52. These four names are related themselves to the four Olamas, Tatsilas, Bria, Yitzira, Asiya. They have functions of their own. We don't have time and it's beyond the scope of what we're able to do and beyond the scope of what I'm able to convey here in, in, in this year. But just, that's what, that's what he's referring to here. Kasa, Kana, Kamag, these other three Shemas are related to the, the Miloy of the name Elokim. Unlike the Shem Havaya, in which case, depending on its letters, there are four ways of opening it up and spelling each letter a different way to get four different gematrias. The Shem Elokim has three ways of opening it up. And those gematrias are Kasa 161, Kana 151, and Kamag 143. Okay, these numbers together, which again is the Miloy of Shem Yudke Vavke and the Miloy of Shem Elokim, give you Tar Po, right? 6, 86. Tafresh pei vav gematria ben poiras Yosef. Rabbi Nachman says an interesting thing. It's gematria a third thing also. Shemekabel minukva de pardaska. That ultimately, where does a person get these shemas from? Where does a person get the miloy of elokus? Where does a person get the utmost, utmost that the that the, the names of teva kanakamag? I'm sorry, kasa kanakamag, which is teva, which is elokim, is bursting with yudke vavke av sagmanban. We get it from pardaska. Because Pardaska, this place of Arak Anp in the nose, is also Gematria Tafresh Pevav. So Yosef Atzadeh, that was Zoycha to this world view of Malchus to Gedusha, unbelievable bursting with all the Shemus of the Kus, this is the pinnacle of holiness. Where does Yosef Atzadeh draw this from? Pardaska. And that's why Yosef is called Ben Poiras Yosef, Poiras Gematria Tarpo, Poiras Gematria Pardaska. That's Yosef Atzadeh, who through Tikkun Abris, through Shmir HaYisoy, is able to to tap into the peace shnayim cherev pefias biyadam of Ruvain, and he's able to get the bechayra and secure this tefila, and the relationship between again Mashiach ben David, Mashiach ben Yosef, right? Tefila and Shmir Sebris. So here, let's turn to two fascinating, unbelievable sources in Rambam Some of the first pieces from Rambam that I was zocha to learn. The mamish mamish blew me away. It blew me away in the simplicity of it. But much more so, it blew me away in the relevance of it, in the way that we actually experience what he, what ultimately he saw in a dream, what he saw in a dream. So let's learn from Rebbe This piece shows up two times, to my knowledge, in Kisver Rebbe One in Kuntras Diver Chalaymas, which is a small little country, is basically Rebbe describing different lessons that came to him in, in a dream. Primarily, we're going to learn, or we're going as as we'll see on, on on Friday night. I think this piece is also. I'm not sure, but primarily on Friday night. And he recorded them exactly which day it was, which parsha it was, which year it was, and he tells you the Torah that he, that he saw. And it shows up in Sikhs at Sadiq in a slightly different form, and let's see both of them together. Says the Heilige Reb Tzadik of Lublin, Says Reb Tzadik, I had a dream when I was in Ishbitz. Sometimes I have a dream that I am in Ishbitz, but he had a dream when he was in Ishbitz. That they were revealing to me, Tyra, Misharish Nasmasi, that was connected to the root of my soul. Listen to what he says. And among many other things that they told me, they said the following. That the generation of Mashiach will be the same souls as the generation of the Midbar. Gilgulim, reincarnation. The Haim Atzman. That souls of the Dara Midbar are Hanafashe Shal Dar HaMabel. Our reincarnation of the Dar HaMabel, Noah's wicked generation. 
Ve'az yishrisu darkam. Says the Heilig Reb Tzadik, in that original incarnation, in the Dara Mabel hishrisu darkam, the Pasuk says that they corrupted their way. Ve'chetze nikr besvarim chatas ne'urim. And this sin of sexual impurity is referred to as chatas ne'urim, right? The sin of, of, of youth. And David Amalek says, chatas ne'urai, Upshai altiskar, don't remember, right? That sin of the youth, of passion. And because they had this issue of Pagama Bris, that's why about them the Pasik says, that the heart of man of that generation was created bad, evil, minura from their youth. Why their youth? Because this was Khatas Nuurim, this was their problem, was Pagama Bris. Even Rashi says on the Pasuk, Pagama Bris, had affected the Bahamas, right? The Bahamas were mating it. It was a terrible scene. V'tiknu zebedar ha-medbar. Where was the tikkun for this Pagama Bris of the dar of Sudaim? Uh, I'm sorry, of the, of the dar of the Mabel. Was the dar of the Midbar. And because the dar of the Midbar, in this new reincarnation, we're going to learn exactly why they were Zohar to be Misakin. But in this generation, they were able to be Shomer Habris. They got out of Mitzrayim, the Mitzrayim, we're going to learn, of their exile to their, to their own gaiva and to their own pleasure, to their own desires. So about them, the Pasuk says, chesed It turned from Ra Minu'urav to Chesed Nu'urim, like the Pasuk says, about the Dara Midbar, Zacharti Lach Chesed Nu'urayich. Instead of Ra Minu'urav, which was the original Gilgal, so over here we have Chesed Nu'urim, Chesed Nu'urayich. The Hadar Shal Mashiach, which is Mamish, our generation, Mamish, our Dar. Yeah, beside the Pasuk in Tehillim is going to refer to them, and the Pasuk says, Tishadesh Kinesher Nu'uraychi. A third time, Nu'uraych. Please, Master of the World, renew my youth like an, like an, like an eagle. It's going to be the same generation, the Dar Midbar, which is going to have this ability to overcome. Which will be mechudash again. At kan terf advar mashe nizayicher adayin says Reb Tzadik. This is the context and the content of what I'm able to remember adayin. Now it seems that when he was writing Tzikas Tzadik, which by the way this had to happen within the first year that he met Reb Tzadik. Tzikas that he met the Mei Ashiloh the Ishbitzer. Tzikas Tzadik was written one year after being an Ishbitz. That means that. From the time that Reb Tzadik came to Ishbitz as a misnagid, a big, big misnagid, somehow within one year he was able to be completely switched to the point that not usually people get into Breslau, they get into Reb Tzadik. They first learn like the light tires, the easy tires. So he jumped into the radicalism of Ishbitz like in a, in, a, in a second. It's an amazing thing. Some of those radical writings of Reb Tzadik are in Sigurd Tzadik. Within one year, how a person could change. It's, it's unbelievable. So it seems that later on that year, I guess, because he said, Chalam libi yoisibi ishbitza, and then Tzikas Tzadik was written one year after that. So it must be later that year, it seems that he remembered a little bit more. Because this piece expounds on this in a very, very important point that he left out the first time. So let's start from the beginning and let's see it again. When a person is young, Unfortunately or unfortunately, that period of youth seems in this generation to have extended far past teenagehood, right? I mean, in the secular world, people are getting married at like at, at late 30s these days. Like every, everything extended and the passion and the reason why they're not getting married, right? You understand? Is, is, is mamish extended far past 18, 19, 20. It's, it's into the 20s and 30s, something that we experience. Miskaberes is mamish strong. So from that passion and from that ability is coming um, is, co- is coming many chatayim and iniquities and sins from the side of the Yitzhahara. And this originated in the Dar HaMabal. It's the same piece, Mamish. The Pasuk says that they had an issue that was related to their youth, to that energy. The Gamkein but Reb Tzadik says there's an element of youth that's negative because it's full of passion for taiva, but there's also an element of youth that's unbelievable strong, which is really the same energy, which is a passion for learning, which is a passion for divrei taira, cheshkus, cheshek, desire. So the Dar HaMidbar, who was a tick and a gilgal of the Dar HaMabal, was able to, tra- to channel that Ram and Urav and to channel it into Divrei Taira, Cheshek and Chuka for Avodah Hashem, and it became Chesed Nu'urayich. And Meshukas of Zacharti Lach, Chesed Nu'urayich. 
And it was the same souls. It was the same exact souls. And the Zerah Kaddish says that Ayin Sham, the Hayu Ru'im Lekabal Tar B'Mabal. Ah, here he's saying a little bit more already. We're going to get into it. I don't want to even translate this because we're going to discuss it outside. Okay, we're going to see that in a second. But Dar Shal Mashiach, and ultimately the Dar of Mashiach, which is our Dar Ikvis of the Mashiach, Az, he a Pam Gimel Oisai Dar. That very generation will return again. Besoid Mashikas of Techadesh, Kenesher Nu'uraychi. Now here's the element that he did not mention the first time. The first time it was very positive. The first time he said that the final generation is going to be, uh, again, a, a third Gilgal, and it's going to be Sheishchadei Sheinis, they're going to have Chesin Uraich. Over here it's not so simple. Va'azyu hatikun hagamor, and ultimately our generation is tasked with bringing about the final and complete rectification. Sheba'oiz bi'ruvuvya. Because in our generation, we have not only the positive passion of the Darham Midbar, but we have also the negative passion of the Darham Mabal. We have them both. That's the Chiddush of our generation. And anybody with eyes can see how, how real this is, how strong this is. I mean, it's, it's open, it's clear. <speaking in Hebrew> that they come mixed together. Chatas ne'urim v'chesen ne'urim. And ultimately, 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 we have the ability to overcome. We have the ability to enable the Yetzir, the Yetzir Taiv and that passion, but it has to be passion because only with passion, with, with, with right? Call, call, call uh, Tame Be'esh, right? It needs to come into Esh, right? You have to, you have to, something that became Tame from heat needs to be, needs to be cleansed, uh, Dafko, with heat, right? It's the same thing. The only way to battle the passion of youth that's, Related to negativity, the Dara Mabel is going to be with this energy mamish of Chesenu Uraich, Chuka, and Cheshek for the Vitari on Avodah Hashem that's bursting with passion, of energy, and, and romance, and, and seeing Avodah Hashem as a relationship with Akadosh Baruch Hu, Mamash Shir Ashir. Okay, that's Rabbi Sadak. The line that we didn't translate is very, very fascinating. Because once, and here we'll talk outside a little bit, because once, you draw a parallel between these three generations, so all of a sudden we have to start finding similarities that are outside of just the context of Nu'urim, right? Either Chesed Nu'raich or Rama Nu'urav, and then finally a Erbuvia, a mix between the two. We're able to all of a sudden see similarities outside of the exact context that, that, that Reb Tzadik brought. One hint he does give us, one hint he gives us is that whereas the Dar HaMidbar was Zohar to receive the Torah, the Dar HaMabal was supposed to receive the Torah, but what happened to the Torah became Ein Mayim Ela Torah, right? The Torah that the Dar HaMabal was supposed to receive, they had no vessels for, and so it came down in a, in a, in a, in a, in a way of Hazino HaShemayim HaDebeira, right? It's Yishma Emre Fi, Yarev Kamatar Likhi, right? Here's a Ketalim Rasi, Yarev Kamatar Likhi, the Gemara in, in, in Taina says that Yarev Kamatar Mamz Arifa, to break the neck, right? That the Torah could be Mamish Sam Mavis, it could be destructive. And so so the Dara Mabel that wasn't Zoche received the Torah in Mayim al Torah in the form of a destructive flood. Destructive flood. And then Mamish, that very energy came down by our Sinai to the Dara Midbar, but they have vessels for it. Nasab Nishma, Sarusa de la Shabbos, other Tzadikim. But they had vessels and it came down in a way of beautiful, beautiful, life changing guidance and Hora and Torah. This is the Medrash on the Pasuk, Hashem Lamabal Yashav, Vayeshav Hashem Melech La'olam. The Medrash says that all the nations of the world at the time of Har Sinai came to, came to Bilam, who was the prophet, right, the big prophet, and they came to him and they said, Hashem Lamabal Yashav, God is going to destroy the world. Because we see now that everything is shaking just like it was then. We see that everything, something's happening in the atmosphere, something's happening to nature. Hashem, they were convinced, Hashem Lamabal Yashav. And Bilam answered, Vayeshav Hashem Melech La'olam. No. HaKadosh Baruch is giving the Torah. You're mistaking it as the Mabel, but Hashem is giving the Torah. Over here you see the Chazal also are drawing a connection between the Torah and the Mabel. In Mayim the Torah, it's either or, right? It's either or. Sam Chaim, Sam Mabes. That's one connection that Reb Tzaddik makes outside, again, of the framework of Chatas Ne'uraich, right? Or Chesed Ne'uraich, or Ram Ne'uraich. But ultimately, far more importantly, we have to understand that the Torah, which seems to have been the defining factor between the difference between the Dara Midbar and the Dara Mabal, is called Taras Moshe. 
Moshe Rabbeinu, mi Allah Shemayim. Moshe Rabbeinu goes up to Shemayim for 40 days, 40 nights, no drink, no sleep, no, no, no eating. Doesn't say no sleep, interestingly enough, but no drink and no and no and no 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 food and water. And he comes down and he brings us the Torah and he changes the whole world. Moshe Rabbeinu. Fascinatingly enough, the Zohar Kadesh and Arizal make a dis- make make a distinction, <coughs> but also a connection. In that distinction between the leader of the Dara Midbar, which, like we already saw, is connected to the Dar Hamabel, and the leader of the Dara Hamabel, who is Noah. The Zohar Kadesh says that Noah came out of the Teva Kadesh Baruch who called him a Raya Shatya, a foolish shepherd. Moish Rabbeinu in the Zohar Kaddish is always referred to as Raya Mehemna, the faithful shepherd. Okay, so again, the two Dairas, we're going to get to our Dar in a minute, but the two Dairas of the Dar Min, the Dar Mabel, are connected the same Nishamas. Chesen Uraich, Raman Urav, the Tyra that comes down in the form of a Sefer, the, the Tyra that comes down, excuse me, in, a, in, in the form of a destructive Mabel. But here we find that the leaders are also connected. They're both called Raya, they're both called shepherds. But Moish Rabbeinu is called Raya Mehemna, the faithful shepherd who does his job faithfully. Noach is called the Raya Shatya, the foolish shepherd who ultimately is not able to redeem his generation in the way that Moish Rabbeinu takes us out of Mitzrayim. Where did Noach fail and where did Moish succeed? In the con- context of Torah Beis, what did we learn is the primary, primary element of a redeemer? It's tefillah. That's his weapon. That's his weapon is tefillah. The Zara Kadosh says that Hashem referred to Noah as a Raya Shati, as a foolish shepherd. Why? Because for 120 years of building this ark, not once did he daven for the generation. He didn't daven for his daughter. That was the main problem. It's a Raya Shati. So he couldn't redeem them. Moish Rabbeinu, on the other hand, he's a Kvad Peh. Big is. But his whole thing is Veschan and Hashem Veesa Davening, 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 all the time davening. Every single time something happens, the so I'll make a mistake, and Hashem says, I want to destroy them. I, I'm Sheir. Moshe is coming to the master of the world and beseeching on behalf of the nation in his charge. So Moshe Rabbeinu is called a Raya Mehemna. Moshe Rabbeinu is able to take us out of Mitzrayim. Everything that Moshe did. Moshe Rabbeinu, we already linked to a Muna to Tefillah last time that Moshe Rabbeinu beats Amalek. How? By Yadav and Muna. Raya Mehemna, Raya Emuna, Raya, right? Yada Emuna Ad Bay Hashem says, Uncle is pierced and betzila. His hands were spread in prayer. Moshe Rabbeinu was the Tikkun of Noyach. Not just that his generation is a Tikkun, the Dara Midbar is a Tikkun of rectification for the Dara Mabel, but why? Why were they the rectification? Because they had a leader who rectified the leader of the Dara Mabel, Noyach and Moshe. Says the Arizal, I can't make this stuff up. It's Taras Emes, Alishayna. The Pasuk that, that most strongly captures and encapsulates Moshe Rabbeinu's mission to pray on behalf of Am Yisrael is the Pasuk Mecheni Na Misifrach Mecheni Na Misifrach Moshe Rabbeinu comes to HaKadosh Baruch Hu and says Master of the world like my whole being my whole essence is to save the nation if you're going to destroy them take my name out of your book because my whole essence is prayer my whole essence is davening for them my whole essence is protecting them with this weapon of tefillah says the Arizal the words Mecheni Na contain within them the words Me Noach, the waters of Noach, and Ani Me Noach. Mecheni Noach is the letters Ani Me Noach, Me Noach. Moish Rabbeinu in this expression of tefillah is the Tikkun of Noach. He's demonstrating why, whereas the Me Noach, that Mabel, his mom is called Me Noach, it's called the Noach's Mabel because it was all on him. In a certain way, again, right? we're speaking about somebody who the Torah testifies that Sadiq has to be poigim in that covet, what that means. We have no idea, not saga. But this is what the Sadiqim tell us that Moshe in this moment is rectifying that Bechina, is rectifying that Nakuda where Noach did not daven, and Moshe Rabbeinu comes to daven in that way. The Dara Midbar can be read Dar Hamadaber. Dar Hamidbar, the Gedusha Slavi says Dar Hamadaber. The entire generation of the Dara Midbar is a Dar Hamadabar that's taught how to speak, that's taught how to speak by their leader, Moshe Rabbeinu. By their leader, Moshe Rabbeinu, who's all about tefillah of Eschan and Hashem, Ba'isa Hilemar. That's Moshe Rabbeinu, who's the Tikkun for Noyach. That's the Dar Hamadabar, the Dara Midbar, is the Tikkun for the Dara Mabel. Why was Moshe Rabbeinu able to daven in this way? 
because unlike the generation of the Mabel which had no Shmir Sabris, right? That's what Rabbi Nachman says, that Shmir Sabris and Tefillah go together. Rabbi Tzaddik said that they were called which is Pchama Briz. So Mamela, that was Mashpia on their leader that he had no he had no ability to speak. But Moshe Rabbeinu's entire generation that escapes Ervas Haaretz, that escapes Mitzrayim, that is able to break free of the Mitzarim, of the constrictions of the Yitzhahara, out of that slavery and to become free, they become the Dara Medaber. Mamela, their leader becomes Moshe Rabbeinu Mecheni Nami Sifrachaz, the Tikkun of Minayach. Fascinatingly enough, Although Noach is not able on his level to save his generation with tefillah like Moshe was, he himself is saved through tefillah. He himself is saved through tefillah because at the end of the day, if anybody is to be saved, if anybody is to be redeemed with this aspect of Mashiach, Messiah, it's got to be through tefillah. Where do we find that Noach is saved through tefillah? So if you look just at the, at the source of it here when it says the three redeemers. So look at the first line. So just to review, Dar Hamabel Znus Lelot right? That we already explained. Noach Lo Hispal Al Al Dar, but she didn't dive it. Haya Nitzel B'Soich Hateva, but he himself was saved in the Teva, which literally means an ark. But the Baal Shem Tov and the Tzadikim reveal that Teva also means a word, the words of Tfila. He was saved in a Teva. The measurement for the Teva is thirty three hundred and fifty, which spell Lashon, which is speech. And the Rosh Tevis of the names of his sons, Shem, Cham, and Yavis, is Siach. Ayetze Yitzchak, Lasuach, Vasade, Mashiach, Mesiach. Noach himself needs to be redeemed through prayer. He can't pray for his generation, but he's saved. It's got to be through Tefillah. Moish Rabbeinu, let's go to the second line, Dara Midbar, Geulas Mitzrayim, Ayde Moish Shehispalo, Mecheni Nov, you look at the letter, it spells Me Noach and Ani Me Noach, Dara Medaber, the Dara Midbar, the Dara Medaber. So here we come to, to our dar. Here we come to the third iteration, to the third Gilgal. I couldn't say this on my own, and I wouldn't say this on my own. But my Rebbe, or Moshe Weimar Shlita, very publicly, a few years ago, at one of the dinners for the, for the Brussels Research Institute, he stood up and he said this resolutely, with absolute confidence and without any holding back. My Rebbe said that just like the Dairis, which were Magugal one into the other, so the Dar HaMabal, that went into the Dar HaMidbar, that ultimately comes to our generation, shared leaders in that Moshe was a Gilgal of Naya. So it must be that the final generation, it doesn't just mean generation, 20 to 25 years, a new generation. It means an era, right? That final era until the coming of Mashiach is going to have its own manhik, is going to have its own leader. And this leader is going to need to be able to, again, guide this generation, not like very easily the Dharma Dabr is full of tefillah, full of amuna, full of goodness, even though they had their share of issues themselves. But this leader is going to need to be able to instill within us the importance of Shmir Sabris, Chesinu Urayach, as well as tefillah, and to bring us to a place of tikkun prati, of geula prati, to break us out of, like we talked about, our individual mitzrayim, our individual mitzrayim, our individual malchus to, to, to see the world as being devoid of godliness, at the same time, and mamish, bring us to that place of Mashiach, to shine the ar of Mashiach in the world in an unbelievable, unprecedented way. Who is this mystery leader? Fascinatingly, the Medrash says that Noyach had a few names. One of the names of Noyach was Nachman. One of the names of Noach himself, the Medrash says, was Nachman. The Pasuk says, why was Noach called Noach? Because Zayi Nachamenu, and that Pasuk is, right, in that word is Nachman, Zayi Nachamenu Mimasenu Mi'itzvan Yadeinu, from the depression of our hands. Rabbi Nachman of Breslev was completely and solely focused on Atzvus, on depression. That at the end of time is going to arise with this generation that is a reincarnation of the Dar HaMidbar and ultimately of the Dar HaMabal that had leaders who were Noah and Moshe Rabbeinu. Ultimately, there's going to be a third redeemer. There's going to be a third leader who's able to stand up and to take us to the finish line, to be able to shine down to us this light of Mashiach ben David of Tefillah, this light of Mashiach ben Yosef of Shemir Sabris. 
who's going to be able to save us in the same way that Noah in his generation was but should have been even more. Fascinatingly enough, Rabbi Nachman said about himself, Kol ha'inyin shali hu rak tefila. Gar main zach is tefila, Rabbi Nachman said about himself. Another thing that Rabbi Nachman said about himself is that his entire Indian was shmir sabris. Rabbi Nachman went at length to describe the struggles that he, has, he had as a child on his level in this area and the way that he overcame to the point that Rabbi Nachman, toward the end of his very short life, said about himself that a man to him was just like a woman. Right? Meaning he had, he had no desire at all. A woman to him was just like a man, rather, the opposite way. A woman was just like a man. He, he, he completely eradicated this Yetzer Har from within himself. The blend between Mashiach ben David and Mashiach ben Yosef. The blend between Tefillah and Shemir Sabris. These two elements that are necessary to save a generation, to save a confused generation that's struggling with Yetzer Lev Adam Ram and Ura, that's struggling in this area of Shemir Sabris. Look inside. The Pasuk Ve'im Ayin Mecheni Nami Sifracha. Okay? Look at the words Mecheni Na. Or Ayin Mecheni Na. Spell the words Ani Nachman. In addition to spelling the words Meinoyach, which is the first Gilgal, and the first Dar, and in addition to these words being Moshe Rabbeinu's expression of his very essence, they also hint to the third Redeemer, to that energy of Rabbi Nachman of Breslov, and our generation that's struggling with Shmir Sabris and struggling with Amuna, the Tefillah. It says the words, Ani Nachman. And the Rosh Tevis of the Im Ayin Mecheni Nami Sifrucha spell, Meuman. Ani Nachman Meuman. Amazing thing. Totally, totally mind boggling. How this one Pusik hints to the three generations and the three Redeemers who are all connected to tefillah. Again, one that failed, one that completely succeeded, and that one that said, gamarti ve'egmar. I already, meaning in a previous Gilgal, I already completed ve'egmar, and I'll ultimately complete and finish. And Rabbi Nachman again was kasha shmir sabris ve'tefillah. He bound these two in Yanim together, not just in his own life, but in his, in his tyrus. And his teachings taught us the connection between Shemir Sabr Sutfila, the Indian of Mashiach ben Yosef, a Yosef had Tzadik, Tzadik Yisod Olam, and Mashiach ben David. Fascinatingly enough, Rabbi Nachman had a son who he named Shlomo Ephraim. Shlomo is the son of David, Ephraim is the son of Yosef. And he felt that this son was going to be Mashiach, Mamish Mashiach himself. Not just the light of Mashiach, the energy of Mashiach. He felt that this was going to be Mashiach. Shlomo Ephraim, the blend between Mashiach ben David, Tefillah, Mashiach ben Yosef, Shmir Sabris, Yesod and Malchus, and ultimately the baby was, was taken away from him, died as an infant, and after that, Rabbi Nachman taught Tara Samachai, and after that, Rabbi Nachman started to reveal Sipur and Maisius, which contained within them the, 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 the energy and the Ruach of Geula, but that's for a separate Shmuz. This is the three generations. Much more importantly, this is our generation. These two elements of Mashiach ben David and Mashiach ben Yosef, of Tfila and Shmir Sabris, Tfila of course is Emunah, faith, and Shmir Sabris, is the struggle of what we're going through. And just like the reason that the Dar HaMabal failed is because they didn't connect themselves to a leader who is going to be able to guide them in the way of davening for them and going to be able to take them out of their Mitzarim. And the reason that the Dar HaMidbar did succeed, the Dar HaMidbar, the Dar HaMidbar did succeed is because they connected by Aminu Bashem Uva Moshe Avdi and they had this leader who was able to go ahead and to pray for them and to daven for them and to lead them out of Mitzrayim. So too, Mamish, Kipshutai, the Geula of the third generation, of this era, of this Dar that we're living in, until Mashiach, Rabbi Nachman said, This is it. This is the final, final goal. And it sound, could sound radical to a person who's, who's I, I believe this, but Emunah Shleim, it's a foundation of my faith. Mamish, a foundation of my faith. It's clear to me. Having, having, having seen this particular Tyra and this arrangement, but having seen and witnessed firsthand in my own life in a tiny limited way, but certainly in the lives of others, the way in which Rabbi Nachman redeems us, literally redeems us, redeems us. So our redemption is going to depend on our Kesher, to this Tzaddik, to what the Breast of us call Tzaddik HaEmes, the true Tzaddik, not that there are other Tzaddikim who are fake, although Rabbi Nachman talks about them as well, but there are many, many Tzaddikim. But this Tzaddik who's bound historically, with other generations who experienced redemption. This tzaddik who has this ability 
that Rabbi's Banois Asu Chayel, there were many Sadiqim, but Va'at Alis Al Kulana, that you're connected to Moshe Rabbeinu, that you're connected to the Hamisha Yechide Doros, which we described in previous Shi'urim, starting from Moshe Rabbeinu, Nerub Shim Barichai, the Arizal, the Baal Shem Tev, and finally Rab Nachman, one Neshama, Nefesh Ruach Neshama, Chay Yechida, that spans generations. Gamarti said Rabbi Nachman, I already completed, I already succeeded the Egmar, and I'll take you to the end. And Rabbi Nachman said, when he introduces Spodados, Give me your hand, and I will lead you on a new way that's really an old way. Rabbi Nachman called himself the Zakin de Kedusha, right? Atik was connected to Atik. Zakin, Zakan Chachma, the Zakan, the beard of Shlaisha Srimides, of Rachman, the Shlaisha Srimides, Dikna, which is connected to Keser, to the head. He was ancient. He was, he was young as anything. He was a little child almost, right, when he was producing these tyrants. But he was ancient. A Zakin de Kedusha. Spanning generations. Noach, Zayin Achaminu Mimasinu Meitzvenideinu, in the very first parasha. Zayin Achaminu Mimasinu Meitzvenideinu, from the beginning of time all the way to the end of time, to come back and to say, Eish Ali Tukad, Abiyas HaMashiach. And it's the very Eish that was burning from the very beginning of time. There's a fire, the Bira Delakas that Avram Vinu saw. It's the same Indian. It's the same world that's on fire that gives us the ability either to see a world that's shining, Malchus to Gedusha, or to get caught up in a world of Malchus to Sitrach. And Rabbi Nachman says, give me, my, give me your hand. Take my hand and I'll lead you on a new way that's really an old way. Follow me and I'll take you to a place of redemption, both personal and collective. Interestingly enough, we know that every month in the Jewish year is connected to one of the Avaram, one of the limbs of the body, in Sefer Yitzira, and also one of the senses. Very, very interestingly enough, there are two months, one of which is connected to the physical nose, which is very much the Indian of Tfila and Amuna that we've been discussing, Keser, Rachamim, the Chulei. And there's one month that's connected to the chush hareach, to the sense of smell, that utilizes the gashmi, the physical nose, to be able to smell. The tzaddikim explain, Rav Kook talks about this a lot, but it's really based on the Ramchal and the Chalban, Mam Shech Darko, Rav Kook talks about this all over the place, that what's Mashiach ben Yosef and what's Mashiach ben David? What are these two elements? So in the content, the context of this Torah, we understand that, Isha, that, that, that Mashiach ben Yosef is Shmir Sabris and Mashiach ben David is Tefillah. But how do you describe that to someone? What is the role of, of Mashiach ben Yosef? What is the role of Mashiach ben David? Of course, we need them both. Of course, they're one team and they're one energy and one can't be without the other. But what are they accomplishing? So Rav Kook, based on the Ramchal, explains and Maimar Gula explains that Mashiach ben Yosef is called physical rectification, Tikkun Hagashmi. Physical redemption. The redemption of the physical to be able to set up a framework in which there can be a ruach, just like a Kaddish Baruch who formed other Marish and first up from Adama, he, he made that the Gashmiya should be completely mitukan, and then he blew into him the ruach of Mashiach ben David, the ruach of life. Nefesh Chayel, the ruach memalul, the speaking spirit. Of We're going to get to that in a moment. That's Mashiach ben Yosef is the guf, is the tikkun Gashmi. Mashiach ben David is once you have the, the whole infrastructure set up and arranged, then that spirit, that Ruach Mimarom comes down and fills that energy, and, and, or rather, that fills that framework with this energy of redemptive spirit, not just redemptive, Gashmias, redemptive physicality, but redemptive spirit to be able to bring this being of all of the universe, right? But particularly Am Yisrael to life, Mamash to life. And this is what Yechezkel saw. The vision of Yechezkel first sees all the bones coming together, Mashiach ben Yosef, taking Gashmi. And then a Ruach comes down and brings them to life. That's Mashiach ben David. That's what Ramchal says. Now that we know that Mashiach who's Tikkun HaMalchus, Malchus based David, Mashiach ben David, is connected to the nose. So it must be, therefore, that the nose also has the element of Gashmias and the nose has the element of Ruchnias. Right? Because Mashiach, who's drawing from Pardaska, has to have two elements. One, Mashiach ben Yosef of Shmir Sabris, and two, Tfilah, the ability to speak, the ability to have faith, to pray, and then he can draw down from Pardaska the Rachamim that he's davening for. So amazing thing is that the month of Adar, which is the month of Yosef HaTzadik, because Adar is the only month which can have Pishnayim, which can have two Adars, which is, which is Menashe and Ephraim. 
It's the only month because all the Shvatim, right, is the whole year is 12 months, 12 Shvatim. But there's only one month that has Adar Aleph, Adar Beis. We have Nisan Aleph, Nisan Beis. Only Adar Aleph, Adar Beis. This is the one Shevet that really is two Shvatim, which is Pishnayim, which itself is the Bechina of Tshmir Sabris. This month, the Sefer Yitzhir says, is Yosef Atzadik's month, and its physical counterpart in the human body is the af, is the nose. Shmir Sabris is also connected to Nukva de Pradaska, but it's the physical nose. Tikan Agashmi, Mashiach ben Yosef. Mar Cheshvin, Ram Cheshvin, which, we, which we're still in now, right? Aleph Kislev is going to be on Friday. And just a word hour, Shchaydesh, Mamish, Good Chaydesh. We're still in, right? So we're yeah, still yeah. in Cheshvin now. But Mamish, an amazing thing, I just want to let you know, I just reminded that it was Rishchaydesh Kislev tonight. The Chsam Cypher says, that 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 Rishchaydish Kislev is mamish the same energy of Yom Kippur, and he says the first four days of Kislev is mamish like those four days between Yom Kippur and Sukkot, with all of the iris and all of the lights and abilities to tap into complete, complete tikkun and complete slicha and mechili. Even if a person missed the whole thing of Aseret Semid Shuba and missed Yom Kippur and missed everything until now, Kislev is this tikkun. You can accomplish everything in the Neila of the Neila of the Neila that is Chanukah. That all starts in Kislev. That Eretz uh, Tzaddik explains that the whole energy of whatever's going to come in the month starts with. Rosh Chodesh. So everything is in Kislev, Mamash. But Cheshvin, which we're still in right now, and those are Chodesh Kislev, but Cheshvin, and with this will end, Cheshvin is the month of Mashiach. Why is it called Mar Cheshvin? Because it's devoid of any Yom Tavim, right? On the heels of a, of a month that's Tishrei, that's bursting, bursting, bursting with Yom Tavim. Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Sukkot is amazing. Cheshvin is called Mar, it's called bitter because it's missing any Yom Tavim. But only the Svarim of Chitzonius, quote-unquote, the Svarim of Pshat, call it Mar Cheshvin. The Svarim of Pneumius call it Ram Cheshvin. It's not bitter, it's Ram Cheshvin. It's the most elevated month of the year. How could it be, how could it be elevated? It's missing everything. It has no Yom Tevin, it has no holiness other than Shabbos. What's the holiness of, of Cheshvin? So the Mikubalim explained that the month of Cheshvin is not devoid of holiness. It's reserved for Mashiach ben David. Because in this month of Cheshvin, Mashiach ben David is going to inaugurate the Beis HaMikdash. The month of Cheshvan. So it's reserved. It's too holy. It's not, it's, not, it's not holy enough. It's too holy for our current cycle of the year, of the months of the year. The Sefer Yitzirah, with this will end, the Sefer Yitzirah says that the Chush that's related to the month of Cheshvan is the Chush Hareach, of the actual sense of smell. So how matok is this? The month that's related to Yosef, who's Yosef at Sadiq, who's Mashiach bin Yosef, who's taken a Gashmi, is the nose. And the Mashiach ben David is related to Cheshvin, the Reach, the actual spirit that fills the nose. And how fascinating is it that a Kaddish Baruch who breathes into Noah, uh, and breathes into Adam Rishin, which is the Bechina of Gashmias, and then the Mashiach ben, ben David, which is the Ruach, the Reach, where does Mashiach, where does HaKadosh Baruch Hu blow that into? Dafka through the nostril, through the nose. Dafka through the nose. What is the spirit that Hashem blows into the nose? Ruach, Right? Nefesh Chaya. What does the Zarka, what, what does the Targum Unkle say? Ruach Mamala, a speaking spirit. That's Tikkun Agashmi, Tikkun Aruchni, Shmir Sabris is the Gashmias, Tfila is the Ruchnias, and it becomes Ruach Mamala, this speech of Pardaska, of deepest, deepest connection to Rachman and Kimur, to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That's Mashiach bin Yosef, Mashiach bin David, Tikkun Agashmi, Tikkun Aruchni. And that's the month of Adar and Cheshvan. And with this we'll finish. Adam, we know from the Shlach Kaddish and other tzaddikim, Adam is Rosh Tevis. Adam, David, Mashiach. Right? Adam Rishon in and of himself contains this neshama, this unbelievable neshama that's going to span all generations from beginning to end. The Hamishi Yechidi Dairis, the, the, the aspect of Malchus based David, that aspect of Bechina, of Rabbi Nachman of Breslov, Anit Tfila, where David Amalek says about himself, Rabbi Nachman says, Gar Mein Zach in Yiddish, my whole thing is Tfila. If you open up the letters of David, of, of Adam, in the same way that we talked about, opening up the letters of Yudke Vavke, of Elohim, in that note, the, the iris of Pardaska, the Tarpo iris, Av Sag Maban, Kana Kamag. If you open up the word Adam, so let's do it together, Aleph, Dalad Mem, so we have a Dalad and a Mem, which is the hidden letters, the Panemius of Adam, is Dalad Mem. The, word, the letter Mem is Yud Mem. And then finally, 
Mem, I'm sorry, Dal, I'm sorry, Adam is Aleph is Lamed Pei. What am I saying? Aleph is Lamed Pei. The Dalid is Lamed Yud Taf, right? Dalid is spelled Dalid, Lamed Yud Taf. And then the Mem is Yud Mem. The hidden letters of Adam, without the initial letters, leave those aside, but the hidden, the letters inside spell Mispalel, one who prays. The panemius of Adam is Mispalel. Because Adam again is founded upon the tikkun, Hagashmi, the tikkun of the nose, the tikkun of Yosef Atzadik Shmir Sabris, and then ultimately the composite of the Ruach Memalala, that speaking spirit that's blown into him. The Pneumius of him is Tfilah, the Pneumius of him is Mashiach, Mesiach, the Dar Hamadaber, right, which was the tikkun of the Itzadas Tovara, was Har Sinai, right, the, 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 the Zuama stopped, Paska Zuama, the Zuama that was instilled within Chava in the beginning of creation from the Nachash, Hitoba Zuama stopped at Har Sinai, came back to the Chete, the, the, the Chete Egal on that level, but beforehand, that was the tikkun. Adam Rishon is the Mispalel, is one who prays. What does it say about Adam, and, and this Ramam is finishing, why did HaKadosh Baruch Hu need to bring Adam into the world in the first place? What does the Pasuk say? Adam ayin Adam. There was no man to work the earth. What does that mean, to work? Say Chazal, Ezu avoda shabaleiv, avi emerzu There was no one to daven. All the vegetables were already, Rashi says, were at the surface, but they just needed man to pray for, for rain. That means that the premise of man and the premise of, 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 of our whole nation, Amzu Yitzartali, for what purpose? Tihilasi Yisaperu, the premise is prayer. And where do we get this prayer from? Tafka, the redemptive prayer, the prayer of faith, it comes from the Mashiach and Yosef, first the Tikkun Agashmi of Yosef at Sadiq. So just to reiterate finally, is that in this final generation that is a Gilgal of both the Dara Midbar and the Dara Mabal, the Chesenu Uraich of the Dara Midbar and the Raman Urv of the Dara Mabal, and each and every one of us experience within ourselves the Irbuvia, right? The Ara and the Choshech that are Mishtamshim but Irbuvia. This battle of passions that we're so passionate about Hashem but we have the passions that sometimes lead us in negative places and passions in the very same point that lead us to, 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 uh, to, to positive things. What's going to be the ticket is to hold on to the tzaddik, is to hold on to this final redeemer that a Baruch who sent to the world this little ruach in the story of the lost princess that comes at the very end, you know, comes at the very end. That that if the Dar Hamabal failed because they didn't have a leader, and the Dar Midbar succeeded because they had a leader, to take them out of Mitzrayim. So we have a leader, we have a tzaddik. We have a tzaddik that the master of the world sent this, this neshama down to the final generation to again pave the way to redemption through his tyrus, through his eitzes, through the way that he wants us to serve HaKadosh Baruch Hu, through the chizek, to save us and to guide us to a place of emuna, to guide us to a place of malchus based David, to enable us to reveal the chilek Mashiach that each of us have within, to have personal redemption and personal shmir sabris Mashiach ben Yosef and personal tefillah on the highest, highest levels, Mashiach ben David. So through holding on to this tzaddik and to walk in his path and to learn the Torah, we should be zaycha ultimately to have the culmination of this long, long process from the beginning of time, from the first parish of the Torah, all the way to the end of the Achrayni Achrayim, all the way to the end of Torah Shabbat Peh, Torah Shabbat Peh, Pishnai, and Cher Pephis, Biyadam, Mishwazeich, to see Mashiach come down that mountain on the donkey, Mamish, the Mashiach, with his sword, this Cher Pephis, this double-edged sword of prayer, to finally bring this world a Malchus Zitra Achra, and to reveal how it was only ever a Malchus to Kedusha, to reveal how the Racham and Gemurim HaKapzech, the Pasuk says, Hashem will redeem us with unbelievable Racham, and we should be zeichah to see it with our own eyes, and smell it, more importantly, with our own nose, speedily, in Ritz Hashem, and in our days. Shkoyach, shkoyach.